Hello, today we are going to look at a related rates problem. A related rates problem is a name for a type of calculus problem where you're dealing with multiple different rates that are changing, different objects that are moving at different rates. Now when you deal with these problems, they're often sort of complicated word problems and it's really good to have a diagram. So as I read through this problem, I'm going to try and create my diagram right along with it. So we have a police cruiser approaching a right angled intersection from the north. So we have an intersection. The police is coming from the north, driving like that. When a speeding car that has turned the corner is now moving straight east. So let's see, never eat shredded wheat. This car is now driving here and going east. When the cruiser is 0.6 miles north of the intersection, so that gives me a length, 0.6 from here to here, he noticed that the car is 0.8 miles to the east. So the difference from the intersection to the car is 0.8. The police determines with a radar that the distance between them and the car is increasing at 20 miles per hour. So here, the distance between the car the police and the car, this value right here, the hypotenuse of what we can see is a right triangle, that is going at 20 miles per hour. The rate of that is 20 miles per hour. If the cruiser is moving at 60 miles per hour, so the cruiser is going down 60 miles per hour, at the instance of measurement, what is the speed of the car? Okay, there's our diagram. Whole lots of things going on. Now we're trying to find this x miles per hour, how fast the car is moving east. When you do these problems, I really like to set it up with three things. The given, what you're trying to find, and a relating equation. This is a great way to organize your information for these type of problems. So before you do any calculus or, lay, um, any calculus or actual math work, just lay these things out and then we'll get to the calculus. So when I say given, I want to know what is the given rate. Well, we're given that 60 miles per hour is the police cruiser, and the distance between them is increasing at 20 miles per hour. But in terms of calculus, what is that? I think it'd be really good for, in this diagram, to label this as the y, this is the x, and then let's call that z. So if the police cruiser is moving down the y-axis, Instead of just 60 miles per hour, it's actually negative 60. And we want to orient that because the police, police cruiser is moving down 60 miles per hour. The distance is decreasing, so it's a, that negative velocity in reference to where we're looking. And also, he's changing on the y-axis. And how is he changing? He's going down 60 miles per hour. Okay, so he's changing distance with respect to time. So we want to put that negative 60 rate in terms of calculus with good calculus notation. And since we labeled that y distance, we're going to say dy dt is equal to negative 60. How much he is changing vertically with respect to time. Okay, it's how he changes as time changes. So we're given that. And we're also given that 20 miles per hour. So we're also given that dz dt is equal to 20. Now that distance is increasing, so we hit, say that it is positive. So I have negative 60 miles per hour and 20 miles per hour. And we have good calculus notation with it. Now what am I trying to find? In the related rates problem, you are always given a rate or two. And you are always trying to find a different rate at some specific time or instance. So what am I trying to find? Well, dx dt, because I want to know how that car that we're chasing is moving. So I dx dt, and I like to say that just equals question mark. So that's what I'm trying to find. But when are we trying to find it? When y is equal to 0 0.6 and x is equal to 0 0.8 because you kind of see the problem freezes us at that moment when the car is 0.6 from the intersection and the speeding car is 0.8 away. 
because see dx dt is changing these cars are moving at different rates so dx dt is going to be one value maybe when it's 0.5 miles from the intersection but it's going to be a different value when it's one mile from the section so we need to freeze time at the instance when our police is 0.6 from the intersection and our speeding car is 0.8. That's when we want to know dx dt. And then you need an equation. You need an equation that relates these variables. And what variables do I have? y, z, and x. So whatever variables are kind of in the top of your calculus notation there. And this is where you have to think of that yourself. You have to think of what equation relates x, y, and z in this scenario. And a lot of times it's really not that hard because it's usually the geometric shape you're dealing with. Um, in this case, we're dealing with a right triangle and you kind of recognize that as you set up the diagram. And if you're dealing with a right triangle, what better than good old Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus y squared equals z squared. So now I came up with a equation that relates my three variables and it has to do with the kind of scenario I'm dealing with. Okay, so that's all our legwork. Now we can do some calculus. The purpose of that equation is that it relates the variables, but I need to know something about dy dt, dz dt, dx dt, but currently I only know about x, y, and z. I only know about the objects, but not the rates of them. So how do I find the rate of something? Well, any good calculus student would say by finding the derivative. So I'm going to take x squared plus y squared equals z squared, and I'm going to take the derivative of it. But how exactly? Because you take the derivative with respect to x, with respect to y, with respect to what variable? And this is where we introduce another one, and it's already in our setup with respect to t. So I'm taking the derivative with respect to t, which means, notice when I write this, so I put d dt, telling me that I'm going to take the derivative. Notice how this variable and that variable do not match up. Same for this and this, same for this and this. When that happens, you are doing implicit differentiation. Okay, that is contrasted with, if we look down here, if I say d dx of x squared, because those variables match up, it's just a simple power rule derivative. But in your notation, if your variables do not match up, it's implicit, which means it's a chain rule. So when I take this derivative, it is 2x, that's the derivative of the outside function, times the derivative of the inner function. And when you take the derivative of x with respect to d, you can't do much. As far as simplifying, you just say dx dt. I go to y, same thing. It's implicit differentiation. 2y dy dt equals 2z dz dt. Now notice back at the diagram, all of these y, x, and z, they're all changing, okay? Because the cars are both moving, the distance between them is changing. Therefore, I have three different rates for them because they're all changing. I also have all three of my variables because they're all changing. And at this point, I'm not freezing them anywhere. However, now that I have taken the derivative, I am going to plug in what I know. I'm going to freeze time and say at this specific moment, when x equals this, when y equals this, what is d x dt? So let's plug in what we know. I have 2 times x is 0 0.8, dx dt is what we're trying to find, so I'll just put dx dt, plus 2 times y, which is 0 0.6, dy dt is that negative 60, equals 2 times z. What is z? I don't actually have that length. I don't know what z is, the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Hey, but that's okay, because I know the other two lengths. So we return to our Pythagorean theorem, and we say 0 0.6 squared plus 0 0.8 squared equals z squared, which is 0 0.36 plus 0 0.64 equals z squared. That's 1 equals z squared. 
therefore z equals 1. So at this instance, the length of the hypotenuse is 1. The distance between the cars is 1 mile. And then dz dt, well, we are given that as 20 miles per hour. Okay, so we only have one unknown, dx dt, and then we're going to solve for that. Um, let's make this a little easier. Notice I can divide both sides by 2 because it's in common by all of it. So that gives me 0 0.8 dx dt. 0 0.6 times negative 60. That is negative 36. I can check that on my calculator. And then I have 1 times 20, which is 20. 0 0.8 dx dt is equal to, if I add the 36 over, it equals 56. And then I divide by 0 0.8. Divide by 0 0.8. I have 56 divided by 0.8 gives me 70. What does 70 refer to? Well, it's that speed of the car moving away from the police cruiser. 70, and always remember your units. It is 70 miles per hour. That's how the car is moving. Okay, so let's rehash real quick. A related rates problem deals with situation where you have multiple different rates increasing or decreasing. You're going to draw a diagram. You're going to take the rates and the information they give you in the problem and you're going to write the given rate. You're going to write what rate you are trying to find and then you are going to think of some equation that relates the variables of your different rates. Once you write that equation, you are going to take the derivative of it with respect to time, with respect to t, okay? because this is how things change over time. You're going to take that derivative, that's what we did and we got it here, and then you are going to plug in the numbers you know. You must take the derivative first and then plug in the numbers you know. And then you just go through and simplify for your rate and remember to put the appropriate units on your answer. Alright, hope that helped you. Thank you for watching.